becomes a law. Number four in a series of educational films for young people. It's a great time to live in these United States of America. Respected at home and around the free world, our government and our way of life stand as a beacon of light. And it shows in the faces of our young people. The law. A law so complex and encompassing that we have raised schools from the ground to train lawyers, the name we give those fortunate enough to study the intricacies of liberty and the complexities of justice. The law. Housed in the vast libraries and archives of our nation, available to those who understand them best, our laws. But how does it happen? How do the laws come into being? So many questions. Here it is. Looks pretty complicated, doesn't it? Don't worry, by taking it step by step, the process is easy to understand. America is captivated by achieving a balance, a balance between interesting ideas and locations across our nation. Washington. Capital of the free world. But in fact, a bill doesn't start in this beautiful metropolis. It starts here, in the American town, in your hometown. In the homes, the streets, and in the factories. In the important institutions of your town, its university and business buildings. And here, behind these windows, the apparatus of democracy runs 24 hours a day. Through miles of corridor, above and below the ground, the men and women who make the smooth machine operate work tirelessly. And here, on the factory floor, where our workers machine our way of life. This man also works for you. Surveying the factory floor, this man works as a representative of the people in a corporation. Corporations are institutions that allow people to excel through free enterprise and express themselves through their products. And it is here that the law starts. Corporations have their own unwritten laws that they follow, such as the law of supply and demand. These men decide what products and services your town needs, and this gives them many ideas of the laws of our nation. They then take it to the next level of government. This man, your congressman or senator. He is in the legislature, shown here by the arrow. He meets with representatives of corporations who share their ideas with him, and together they sketch out the beginnings of legislation. Being a legislator isn't a nine to five job. They are always at work in all kinds of places, sharing and giving their ideas, they are our connection to Washington. Your legislator then takes these ideas to committee, where details are planned and other legislators bring their constituents' concerns, called lobbies. The tobacco lobby is an example. They bring the concerns of smokers to the table. The gun lobby brings up concerns that people have about firearms in America. Next, what we can now call a bill is put on the floor of the lower half of Congress, the House of Representatives. Shown here by the arrow. The bill is then put up to vote on the House floor, where it passes or fails depending on attendance and party leadership. Flunkies have been dispatched to take the bill to the noble half of Congress. The Senate. The Senate undertakes a similar procedure, slightly hindered by the equal voice of small states. When and if a bill passes, it is then given to a final committee in which all the members of Congress are equally represented.
the bill has been taken from the Capitol to the White House and is given to the President. It is placed on the President's desk for him to sign or veto. If the President vetoes any or all of a bill, it is sent back to Congress, where new ideas are given in an attempt at the three-quarter vote needed to override. If the President agrees, then it becomes a law. There, all debate on it ends, except for the after analysis given here. At colleges and universities, where students undertake the same task that you are doing now to understand our nation's institutions and government. So now you know the long path that a bill travels to become a law. And seen some of the people who make it all happen and whose tireless efforts make sure that this nation and our way of life shall not perish from this earth.